at the end of the third week of finals, four teams remain. Belconnen and Ainsley battled it out at Kipax for a spot in the Neville Eastern Conference final against the Sydney Swans, while the Northern Conference, Aspley and Southport faced off for a chance to take on the Brisbane Lions. Aspley and Southport battled it out at Yoronga in the Northern Conference preliminary final. Southport held the lead early on, booting three goals and five behinds to Aspley's one goal six, giving the Sharks an 11 point lead at quarter time. The tables turned in the second quarter with the Hornets slotting five goals and four behinds while keeping Southport to one goal and two behinds. The Hornets held a 14-point lead at the main break and kept the momentum going into the third, kicking five goals and three behinds, while the Sharks were inaccurate with one goal and seven behinds. Aspley's Eddie Sansbury and Nathan Clark helped spur on their side with goals early in the final term. The Hornets bagged nine majors and two minors, while Southport kicked three goals with six behinds. John James and Edward Sansbury booted three each for Aspley. Fraser Pope also kicked three for Southport. Aspley's domination in the second half earned them the right to take on the Brisbane Lions in the Northern Conference final, which promises to be a close contest, with the Lions winning by just two points in the major semi-final. Aspley took the prelim win over Southport 2015-135 to 8-21-69. So John, obviously a terrific result, a 10 goal final quarter, but it really was set up in those, uh, probably the second quarter when you had the use of that breeze to really, I suppose, ram ha home an advantage. Yeah, we got a slight advantage in the second quarter, but I thought our first quarter was very good. We uh, started pretty well, you know, after that first three minutes, they got a little lucky, I suppose, the first clearance. Um, uh, and we just, our work rate was tremendous in the first quarter and set us up to be able to get in front in the second quarter. So uh, I thought our first half was very good. Thanks, Norm, for joining us. Uh, disappointing day in a preliminary final. Uh, and it, uh, as much as anything, it, it beaten by a better side, I think. But you look, your guys looked a little bit tired and run out of steam in the finish. Yeah, oh, there shouldn't be any reason for that. You know, we were on top of the ground last week. But we were just, as you said, beaten by a better side. They were better organised than us. I think they, you know, I thought our boys tried hard, but we didn't get much result for what we did early, and you know our skills were down, and our actual running ability was down. We had a few players down on the day, which we really need to play well, and unfortunately they're our quicker players. But uh, all credit to Aspley. And uh, obviously your, your key forwards couldn't quite find their way into the game. Baxter ended up with a couple, but Hughes couldn't yeah. quite find it. You, you tried to rotate players through that forward. Uh, Forwards uh, through the forward line, you uh, just couldn't quite find the right combination. No, it, look, it's a concern because the last two years in primary finals we've virtually played the same way, in my opinion, and uh, our forwards have struggled. That's something we've got to look at. It was a physical encounter at Kipax between the Magpies and the Tricolours, with both teams fighting hard for a shot at the Swans in the Eastern Conference final. Belconnen got the points on the board early, getting out to a very strong 33-point lead at the first break. And that's a great kick from Matthew Loken. Kicking eight goals with four behinds in the first quarter. Goal, straight over the goal umpire's hat, John Love. While Ainsley registered three goals and one behind. Right on 50, unloads one. Does Marcus Crook for his second? That's a great kick from a great player in Marcus Crook. Another strong performance in the second quarter with Belconnen kicking another seven goals and three single pointers. Ainsley kicked four of each, but the Magpies were up by 50 at the main break. Right out towards Loken. Four goals, Matthew Loken just fed off it like a shark. Ainsley came out of half-time determined and stepped up the fight. The Tricolours kicked seven goals and four behinds, while slowing down Belconnen, they kicked two goals and five behinds. You can't keep a good man down, Paul Nitty. Joshua Bennett. Ainsley managed to draw back Belconnen's lead to just 21 points going into the final quarter. The forwards from both both sides were kept quiet in the final term, with Belconnen adding just one goal and three behinds, with Ainsley kicking two majors and two single pointers. Down, Ainsley kicked the goal. Matthew Loken led the way for Belconnen, kicking four majors. Nick Payne booted five for Ainsley. Despite the Ainsley comeback, the Magpies were too strong, taking the win by 16 points in the end. Belconnen progressed through to the Neville Eastern Conference final against the Swans. It's set to be a great game with the Swans too good for the Magpies 
Magpies last time they met, but the final will be at the Magpies nest, Kipax, and in finals footy, anything can happen. The big games this weekend will see the Eastern Conference final at Kipax pit the Sydney Swans reserves against Belconnen at a quarter past two on Sunday. The Northern Conference final will see the Brisbane Lions and Aspley do battle at Yeronga at a quarter past one on Sunday. For more info, head to neefal.com.au and to stay up to date with the Neefal fixtures, results and news, simply download the Neefal app from your app store.